Howdy folks. So today is uh, Shapewigs Day. Um, what I've got is a couple parts that I ordered. Um, one is the flat bit holder, which I have a video on this already. Uh, thank you Sunshine for highlighting this. Um, this just happens to be the black bronze steel compared to the silver bronze steel. For anybody who's interested in that uh, color, and I'll take some photos of these, and these will be on the product page. So that's actually not rust, that's actually bronze in there. Um, but what I actually ordered was this guy. This is my second prototype of a T-shank blade holder for the Leatherman Free P4. Uh, now this guy will only work on the P4 because you're using the spot for the saw. And uh, you also need to remove at least one implement to get this installed. Um, I removed the can opener because I don't really get around to opening too many tin cans anymore. Uh, so this was my first prototype of the T-shank holder. And it was made out of all bronzed uh, stainless steel. Uh, not bronze, sorry. This is a, it's actually laser centered steel that uh, what, the do, what they do is they actually use the bronze to bind uh, stainless steel powder and then they center it in order to bring it into a full kind of amalgam. Um, so the first prototype was all metal. It was really cool. It uses this dovetail feature which is in the, uh, the current version so that this becomes a single locked piece. And you basically put in a T-shank, close it, now this one I modified, I have a video on, mo on the uh, multitool.org forums. In this case the sun is getting in the way, let me back up here a little bit. Um, but you can see this is loose, and I tried to put a little spring grip in here, but this material is, while strong, not springy. Um, and I need to be able to work with multiple thicknesses of blades. Uh, see, the Bosch blades come in anywhere from 1 millimeter to 1.5, and then the Leatherman blades are actually 1.9 millimeters. So this is the second prototype I've designed, and what I did was replaced half of it with nylon. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of a wear mark there, and that's deliberate. This is a spring arm, so that when this closes, it will dovetail in like that. It dovetails on the top and it kind of dovetails right here. And then the spring arm works inside to hold different thicknesses of bits. And then once closed, they lock together. Uh, now this is a second prototype. I want to kind of clean up the, uh, make this a little bit tighter. And then right now when it closes, it's kind of pushing the piece up. So I just need to tweak that a little bit. But otherwise, this works. So you split these two apart. There we go. Um, now this has a very tight fit to the Bosch T-shanks. Such that there's very little wobble here. Um, a Leatherman T-shank has to be ground down. And so I've ground this one down just using some hand files and a Dremel uh, with a diamond bit in order to kind of clean up and tweak it. So as you can see here, I can snap in a very thick Leatherman blade. And because the nylon is flexible, what it'll do is hold that extremely well. No wiggle. So now I can, if I want to store this with the tool, I do need to cut off, um, in this case, about a quarter inch. Um, and I may do that because this is the piece I wanted to put back into the free series. I wanted my diamond file along with the regular file. Um, I've also kept this one in here uh, simply because it's got the cross cut, which is good for different materials. Um, so, like I said, you can easily take this out. You just kind of unlock it. You can take it to this position as easiest and then push that. And these two pieces kind of... Uh, stick together at a 90 degree angle. What I have is a little pin that uh, keeps them kind of stuck together. So now I could take something like a much thinner wood blade here, one millimeter thick, put that in there, 
locked in. And so see, this has a little bit of wobble, much less than if you put a T-shank into a Leatherman Surge. Uh, those have so much wobble that people sell shims to, uh, to fix those. Um, so this is enough that it's completely usable. Um, I actually don't have anything here to cut right now. I guess I could uh, try cutting into an old prototype of pla that's plastic, but just to see how this works. It's probably too rough for what I'm doing here. And then again, if you want to store a blade, you're going to be cutting a little bit off depending on the length of blade in order to keep it stored in there, but you can at least keep one, your favorite one, stored with the tool. Uh, it can be installed in either direction. And again, this is a prototype. I don't have this for sale yet. i got to do some more tweaking. I always uh, do a final prototype. These are kind of my 3D printed early ones. Um, for something like this, I actually have to make them in metal and it takes a few weeks to get those made. Um, compared to, say, these guys where they only take like a week in order to get made. Um, so, again, I took out the saw and I took out the can opener. Uh, if you want to keep the saw, you could move it to the where the scissors position is if you want. Uh, this does need to install in the saw position because it's got a built-in thumb tab. So, this will be available in the next month or so, maybe. Uh, you will have to order both pieces separately, just kind of the way Shapeways works. Uh, they don't batch anything together. All they do is make the 3D printed part and ship it. I do my best to, to tweak it so that uh, you don't have to do anything besides install it in the tool. And once this is uh, finally available, I'll have a video on that. Uh, so, future coming soon product. Thanks for watching.